Hi. Hi, welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. I'm Jeff Phillips. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to enhance uh, a function or graph of a function that was the subject of an earlier tutorial with some shading and uh, labelling. So I'll start with a the function that we got up to in the, the last tutorial and take it from there. Uh, one way to shade a function, there are several, but I think the, the quickest is to use the paint bucket tool which is down here. If I click that you'll notice that um, there are some settings up here. Keep the threshold on zero and grow shrink by a millimetre. I've found quite good. That gives you a bit of padding to fill in uh, gaps. And click the paint bucket tool in an area to be shaded. Mine's yellow. If you want a different colour you can change that uh, by clicking the select tool and changing the colour to green or whatever. I'll put it back to yellow. Uh, back to the paint bucket tool. If you've got a small area, it's a good idea to control and mouse wheel to zoom in and then fill so any gaps are less noticeable. I'll control mouse wheel out again. You can see that uh, that looks reasonable, but the fill is actually on top of the graph and part of the axis. So if I shift click to select both yellow areas and then send them to the bottom as far as the stacking order goes with this icon, that looks a bit better than click off screen. If I want to shade in a little bit over to the right here, I'd need a bound area. So I'll use my Bezier tool and click and hold down control, drag up and double click and select. Now that probably doesn't look great because the line is in front of the function so again I'll click that and send it to the back. That looks okay. Zoom in a bit. Now go back to the paint bucket tool and click and that fills it in. Select tool and send it to the back. Click and that's okay. Sometimes you get little white areas uh, you know, not perfectly filled. It's a little bit of an annoyance in Inkscape but you can control mouse wheel to zoom in and then, I'll zoom in a bit more, and then click the paint bucket tool again and fill that area. Looks a bit over the top but uh, I can click that and send it to the back. And then as I zoom out again it looks quite clear. Now if I want to uh, label the function uh, with its formula, you can do that in Inkscape by using the text tool but that becomes a bit uh, tiresome italicizing some of the pronumerals and leaving the numbers alone. I prefer to do that in Word. Uh, if I open up Word now and um, use the Word's equation editor that's probably a bit quicker. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Once Word is open, go to Insert then over here to Object, it's a bit hidden this, down to Object and Microsoft Equation Editor 3 should be in the list, there it is, go OK and then if I start typing F bracket X equals X times, I think it was X uh, plus 1 X minus 2 Actually, it might have been the other way around, but you can edit uh, x plus 2, x minus 1. I'll just click off screen. Click on it, control C. Then back to Inkscape. Oh, that's the completed version, sorry. Over here and control V. Might have to wait for a little while for that to come in. And I'm going to go control G to group that and put it up here. One nice thing about Inkscape, it's easy to rotate uh, objects. You just click a second time and you'll see the handles change. You can rotate uh, to something like that. Click again to rotate. You can put things in uh, position like that. If I go back to uh, the Word document, have a go, another go at Equation Editor. Insert, Object, Object, Microsoft Equation 3. Now we'll do the integral sign. Uh, under here in the templates, I'll choose an integral that's got uh, limits of integration on it. 
and choose perhaps um, it's hard to see yeah from I don't know one to two f x dx and then click away and then click on the equation control C back to Inkscape control V wait for that to come in control G to group it I'll drag that up here click off I'll put an arrow pointing to an area so with the Bezier tool click that click double click select tool I might want to put an arrow on that I can bring up the fill and shift control shift F if you need to and then stroke stroke style and the end arrow I'll change to an arrow like that control mouse wheel to zoom out a bit if you wish to put that now back into Word you can click and drag around the lot perhaps control G to group is a good idea then control C notice it doesn't group uh, an item unless it's completely enveloped by the marquee so that's good then go back to Word I'll put it down here control V we've got a nice graph in Word that completes the tutorial um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.